I stand for the public questioning of authorities. I stand for honesty, fact-based reasoning, and debate. I oppose all censorship, including hate speech laws. I reject name-calling and insults. I am Bill Warner. There's been a tragedy in the making in Britain for the last 15 years. Thousands of children have been raped, and this is a problem within itself, but what is more of a problem is that the police knew about it, the social workers knew about it, elected officials knew about it, and some in the media knew about it. So why wouldn't they stop this rape of British girls? Well, the perpetrators were Muslims operating in gangs, and you see if you accuse a Muslim of some crime like this, well then you would be a racist, hater, bigot, Islamophobe, and better the girls of Britain be raped than someone think ill of you. Lord Pearson of the House of Lords decided to bring this question in front of the House of Lords. Let's listen to him address the issue first. My Lords, I fear that reply is shamefully inadequate because these girls are usually raped several times a day. And so if we accept the views of our lead police officer for child protection, of Rotherham's MP, and of the recent Jay and Quilliam reports, we seem to be looking at millions of rapes of white and Sikh girls by Muslim men, only 222 of whom have been convicted since 2005. Notice that Lord Pearson says these girls were raped several times a day, so some police officers think that there could be millions of rapes, and only 222 of them have been convicted since 2005. Now then, let's listen to Lord Pearson as he will ask three questions. So, my lords, will the government ask our Muslim leaders whether the perpetrators can claim that their behavior is sanctioned in the Quran and to issue a fatwa against it? And second, my lords, will the government encourage a national debate about the various interpretations of Islam? Can we talk about Islam without being accused of hate crime? Will the government ask our Muslim leaders whether the perpetrators can claim their behavior is sanctioned on the Quran and issue a fatwa? Question one. Question two, can we have a national debate about Islam? Question three. Can we talk about Islam without being accused of a hate crime? And I think this is the most important question. Now then, let's listen to a person who I don't know what his name is. I call him Lord Apologist. He seems to be the chairman of the group. My lords, child sexual exploitation is a vile crime, and it is not exclusive to any one community or culture or race or religion. Political sensitivities or cultural sensitivities should not get into the way of tracking down offenders and preventing future abuse. Can I say to noble lords that I think we should be careful about our language on this matter because I'm, not least because I'm about to repeat a statement about inflammatory letters inciting a punish a Muslim day on April the 3rd. And so I think we need to be careful how we approach this. On the Quran, there's nothing in the Quran that uh, encourages the sort of activity that the noble lord has referred to. Uh, in any case, the Quran would be trumped by the law of the land. Islam, like all world religions, neither supports nor advocates nor condones child sexual exploitation. Indeed, respect for women is inherent in its faith. And as my noble friend Lord Ahmed of Wimbledon has just told me, one of the, one of the uh, phrases is, paradise lies at the feet of the mother. So far as um, encouraging a debate on Islam is concerned, the government is uh, supporting an initiative by British-based Islam leaders of all denominations to dispel the poisonous interpretations of Islam that are peddled by Al-Qaeda and Daesh. And we're taking a number of other initiatives in order to minimize the exposure of children to sexual abuse from whatever source. Now then, what did our Lord Apologist say? Well, he says that child sexual exploitation is a vile crime and it's not exclusive to any one community or culture or race or religion. In other words, they're all the same, we all have our problems, so no, we will not discuss the problems of Islam. He then goes ahead to say that political sensitivities or cultural sensitivities should not get in the way of tracking down the offenders. Really? So for 15 years, British have been so politically correct in being afraid of being called a bigot they wouldn't talk about it, but all of a sudden this has changed? No, Britain is more politically correct now than forever. 
And this is another way of saying, no, we're not going to talk about this. Then he brings himself in as a Quran scholar. There's nothing in the Quran that encourages that sort of activity, sex with children, that the Lord of the Lord is referred to. His answer is wrong, wrong, and wrong. The Quran has a peculiar phraseology which talks about those whom your right hand possesses. There are women whom you've captured, and once you've captured them, you can have sex with them. The Quran says that Muhammad is the perfect Muslim. And what did the perfect Muslim do? Well, he had sex slaves, white ones and Arab ones. But we don't want to talk about this. We don't want to talk about this. Then our Lord Apologist tries to stir a little mud into the waters by saying, you know, we have our own problems here in Britain. Someone sent out a letter that said we should have Punish a Muslim Day, so why that's as bad as 15 years worth of rapes, so let's not talk about this at all. Lord Apologist says, Islam, like all world religions, neither supports nor advocates nor condones child sexual exploitation. Well, actually it does. Quran 65 verse 4 even addresses how if you have a woman you've married who hasn't yet started to have her period, what happens after you divorce her? So if you can divorce her, you can marry her, and she doesn't even have her period. That's a child. Then we have Muhammad. He married Aisha when she was six and consummated the marriage when she was nine. She still had her dolls with her. But you see, our Lord Apologist has the best of all things. He has a Muslim friend who has assured him that paradise lies at the feet of the mother. Well, this is as close as Lord Apologist gets to the truth because if you take all the verses in the Quran that talk about women, 5% of them do praise her as a mother, but 71% of them subjugate her as well. As to encouraging a debate, what we're going to do is we're going to have the government support an initiative by British-based leaders to, of all the different denominations of Islam to dispel the poisonous interpretations of Islam that are peddled by Al-Qaeda and Daesh. This is another way of saying, no, we're not going to talk about it, but we will listen to Muslims talk to us about Islam. Well, Lord Apologist is wrong about Al-Qaeda and Islamic State because they're 100% pure Muslim. This man should be ashamed of being so willfully ignorant. The big question was, can we talk about Islam without being accused of a hate crime? They never answer this, but really, no, we can't because, you see, free speech is really hate speech. If these lords were noble instead of ignorant, they would encourage freedom of speech and freedom of thought, but they don't do this. You know why? They don't trust the British people. The House of Lords is a house of ignorance and a house of cowards. The British are stopping people at their borders if they think they're critics of Islam. The House of Lords is a tragedy. Where's their outrage? They're moral cowards incapable of righteous indignation. They could care less about 15 years of rape. They just don't want to be seen as a hater. They don't hate the Islamic rapists, but they would hate someone who criticized them. Here's the real problem. It's not just the British political system that's corrupt. Throughout all of Europe, we're seeing that politicians don't want to protect the women on the street. There's something tragic about this, way tragic. What are we going to do? I think we need to talk about it, even if we're called haters. Thank you.